doesn't have a purse. She doesn't have a phone. She doesn't have her license. She doesn't have a social security card. She doesn't have a bag. Livia wouldn't go 40 days without reaching out to her family. That was Tamara McCoy, the aunt of missing person Olivia Fowler. Tamara has been working very hard. We're going to see her quoted in several of these articles as we go through this case today. Young mother of three, her children ranging in age from six to one years old. As a matter of fact, it sounds like she missed her newest child's first birthday. What's going on in this case? Does someone out there have the information to help this family find the truth and to find Olivia? We've got to work together. It's time to turn on the searchlight for Olivia Fowler. Welcome back to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for caring about these cases like I do. We've got another one to look into. Not a ton of detail from the news articles, but I have also spoken to a family friend to get some questions answered, try to fill in some of the gaps with this information. Let's go ahead and get started. At NamUs, Olivia Samantha Fowler, a white Caucasian female, date of last contact, August 13th. 2021, missing from Manchester, Georgia at the age of 26. I think, at least in terms of her family, her mother is the last person that spoke to her. Um, we do have a situation where she's living with a boyfriend. Uh, he has not been identified as a person of interest, but we're going to share whatever details we can find around that as well. Missing from Meriwether County, specifically the Manchester, Georgia location, Olivia Fowler left the area of Short Street located in Manchester, Georgia at around 8 o'clock on August 13th, 2021 on foot. Now, we're going to hear some different details that goes on uh, as we go through the articles here. One of those versions is actually that she could have left as early as two o'clock in the morning. I don't know if that was possibly initially she left at that point, maybe then came back to the home, then wound up leaving again later. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get a ton of solid clarification on that. But there are enough sightings that we can start kind of chaining together what looks like a path of travel for her. Um, so this is definitely one of those around eight o'clock uh, leaving the area of Short Street. She was observed walking on Newton Street at around 830 by a resident traveling towards Shirey Road. And around 1030, a Georgia DNR, DNR officer saw Olivia walking on Pebble Brook Road, as did a resident of the area. I wasn't exactly sure what a DNR was, but here at GADNRLE, we learned that it's a Georgia uh, Department of Natural Resources Law Enforcement Division. So, like, for example, game wardens, they've got specialty teams, uh, hunting and fishing licenses, canine units, aviation units. So full branch of law enforcement uh, kind of catered more towards uh, the conservation and natural resources in the area. But let's get a quick little stop at Wikipedia so we can learn about Manchester, Georgia in particular. Manchester is a town in Meriwether and Talbot counties in the U.S. state of Georgia, although it's primarily in Meriwether. Population, 4,230 as of the 2010 census. It is named after Manchester in England. Now, what about this path of travel we have here? Um, let's go ahead and bring up a map real quick and just kind of take a look at this. So short road is here. Uh, there's another road there called long road. They're saying it's from the area of short road. We're going to see in a later news article that it seems like she was actually living on long road, somewhere in the 100 block of long road. Uh, Newton street is right here. This is where we get that first kind of sighting. And from here, this is a walking path that I've turned on for Google. Uh, they said, heading towards Shirey Road. Well, this is Shirey Road right down here. Um, but the 1030 siding puts us way up here, Pebble Brook Road. And you can see from the distance, we're talking 4.4 miles 
uh, which, you know, for two hours of walking, certainly doable. As a matter of fact, probably shows that she's not walking at a too quick of a pace. Uh, seems like she's probably going at, at kind of a slower rate. Typically, normal walk speed is somewhere around three miles per hour. We're looking at about a two hour window and we're talking about 4.4 miles here. Um, does that mean something was on her mind? You know, a lot of the pieces that we're getting with this story kind of lead me to believe maybe there was some type of disagreement that had happened uh, at her boyfriend's home. She she was living there also, uh, which is one of the clarifications I got from the family friend because none of the articles. So one of them says that she was living there. Another one says, no, it's just a home that she left at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, from what I understand, it's the boyfriend's home, but she was living with him. So was there some type of disagreement? Is that why she left at two o'clock in the morning? Uh, we don't have those level of details, but if that information is accurate, I, I don't think it would be outside of the scope of possibilities to think maybe there was a disagreement in the home. So 1030, we do have this sighting from an officer as well as a resident. It's noting here at NamUs. And at this time, Olivia had not been reported as, as missing. And according to the DNR officer, did not appear to be in distress. Olivia has not been seen or spoken to since this sighting. Um, for hair color, they have it noted here, blonde, strawberry blonde. Uh, Olivia was last seen with long, straight blonde hair approximately to the middle of her back in length. She has green eyes for distinctive physical features, a tattoo on her right arm that says, I love you. And here it's noting that uh, she is missing a tooth on the left side on the top row. It's not being very clear, but in one of the later articles, I did find out um, it, it it's what they're calling her fang tooth. So I would assume it's got to be uh, one of the front four or six, uh, depending on possible extractions that, that might have happened. Um, it's kind of interesting because in all of the pictures I've seen of her, I haven't seen any pictures of her where that tooth is missing. Um, and for pictures here at NamUs, literally the profile picture that you see, that's all that's that's posted here. Um, there are many other pictures there. Of course, we've got one directly below me on the window here. Clothing, last seen wearing a tie-dye shirt and white cutoff shorts. They're not noting it here, um, but there is also flip-flops that she's wearing. And I see in some conversation threads like at web sleuths, um, people are getting kind of hung up on, wow, she like just left barefoot and, you know, goes walking for miles. Um, it seems like most of the sources are actually saying she did actually have uh, black flip-flops or, or some type of, of dark colored sandal on. Transportation, none entered. We know she's essentially on foot at this point. And uh, that's about it for the NamUs profile. Um, you know, the circumstances of disappearance, uh, certainly some good detail in there, but outside of that, just not a lot with the NamUs profile. So let's continue over at Facebook. This is a post by Caitlin Ross. She's a reporter at 11 Alive. This was posted on August 26th. 26-year-old Olivia Fowler is missing. The mom of three left her home 13 days ago and hasn't been seen since. Her family says her grandmother passed away while she's been missing, and she would have never missed her funeral if she could help it. They sent me these pictures to show how much she loves her babies. Her family says she never would have left them. They're incredibly worried and have filed a police report in Meriwether County, Georgia, where she was last seen. And one thing that's clear just from looking at the social media that is available, uh, Olivia and her children, it, a very important part of her life. Uh, take a look at her Facebook pages. You're going to see pictures of her and, and her children primarily as, as the main feature of those pages. Um, now, I did just want to point out here on the about page it's saying she went to Manchester High School that she lives in Woodbury, uh, Woodbury Georgia. Woodbury is actually about 13 miles north of where this is going on. And from the information I got from the family friend, uh, it's pretty straightforward. She was actually living with the boyfriend at this time. So I think that her Facebook page just did not get updated. So um, that kind of answers that discrepancy. Not that there's a lot of major discrepancies, but I'm really just trying to fill some of the blanks in this as we go. Over at 11alive.com, family searching for 26-year-old woman last seen in August. 
Olivia Samantha Fowler was reported missing to the Meriwether County Sheriff's Office on Saturday, August 14th. According to the Sheriff's Office, she was seen the day before on Friday, August 13th, around 2 a.m. after she left her home in the 100 block of Long Road. So there we get a little bit of a better description about the starting point of this. She was reported to be walking in the Chally Beat community just outside the city limits of Manchester. And in this article, they also note the same thing. She's wearing a tie-dye shirt, white cut-off shorts, but black flip-flops is specifically listed here as well. One little question I have is I'm not sure who saw her around 2 a.m. Um, it's possible, I guess, if she was up with her boyfriend, maybe that's the last point that he saw her. The information that I'm getting from the family friend is that the boyfriend told the family, um, effectively, he went to sleep. She left while he was sleeping. He wakes up and she's gone. So I don't know if we're talking about him waking up at 2 a.m. and then realizing she's gone, or if that's when he last sees her, goes to sleep at some point after that, she leaves and then he discovers it at some point later that night or early the next morning when he wakes up. I'm, I'm not real certain on that. Uh, Fowler is also known to use the name Hightower, according to the sheriff's office. I believe that ties in with uh, a, a previous boyfriend, possibly fiance. Uh, that she was with. Investigators with the Meriwether County Sheriff's Office said that they followed up on all known witness reports and have canvassed the area, including ground and aerial searches. Authorities have also searched outside Meriwether County's jurisdiction. So sounds like a pretty good effort being put on by law enforcement there. But let's go ahead and kind of uh, hit the map again. Now that we know it's Long Road that she's seen on, um, the timing of it kind of is throwing me off a little bit. If she's at Long Road, last seen at 2 a.m., but we have a sighting of her somewhere in the 8 o'clock time frame at Newton Street, that's a lot of period. That's a long period of time for her to be, I mean, what, is she just walking around the block here? Does she leave at 2 a.m. and then she goes back home? And then throw in this wrinkle, uh, according to information I heard from this family friend, the 830 sighting might not be exactly accurate. Um, there is someone else that happened to look like her. As a matter of fact, on some posters, there was varying descriptions of what she was wearing and people kept pointing out. They're like, wait, we've got two completely different sets of clothes. Apparently that's because there was someone else that was seen that people were assuming was her. So the information from those sightings was coming in and kind of tainting the legit information. So we're not 100% sure about this 830 sighting at Newton Street. Long Road, we know, is the start, and we can certainly rely on the DNR Ranger and his sighting around uh, Pebblebrook Road at 1030 in the morning. Over at Fox 5 Atlanta, here we have a photo of Olivia. I believe that's one of her beautiful children that she's holding in this one. Olivia Fowler, 26, hasn't been seen since August 13th. She went missing outside the town of Manchester. That is about two hours south of Atlanta, Georgia. Both law enforcement and her family say the last known sighting, that DNR ranger at 1030 in the morning on that day that saw her walking along Pebble Brook Road. Her aunt, Tamara McCoy, now walks that same road searching for any sign of her niece. Olivia wouldn't go 40 days without reaching out to her family, McCoy said. During the time of her disappearance, her family says Fowler missed her youngest child's first birthday. <sighs> Over at 11 Alive, another article, and I want to thank uh, the local coverage on this. I know there's not a lot of details, but you can see that people care. Um, there's a few articles I couldn't even use because they're essentially just the same information, but they're in the sources down below. And I just, I really appreciate local media trying to help with a case like this. Another beautiful picture here. Olivia Fowler is the first name listed in the National Missing Persons Database for Georgia because she's the most recent disappearance reported. Fowler's grandmother also passed away and she missed her funeral. Quote, Olivia loves family loves, loves, loves her family. She's a great mother with the biggest heart, said her aunt Tamara. Olivia was reported missing after seeing a man she was dating, according to McCoy. Police have not named him as a suspect. Uh, in terms of information I have about this relationship, 
I heard that they were together for a matter of months, maybe not quite uh, a full year at this point. McCoy drives around endlessly looking for her niece. I got her clothes in the back seat of my car. I'm riding around with them because one ad said she had no shoes and only a tank top. So I want to make sure she has what she needs. I won't take it out of the car, she said. Now, I do believe that that's the misreported sighting. I think they figured out that that was actually someone else that was seen wearing the dark tank top and no shoes. McCoy said she tells Fowler's children every day how much their mom loves them, that if she could, she would be with them right now. From what I'm seeing on social media and in these articles, the family springs to action. They're doing everything they can. They're handing out posters, uh, staying in front of supermarkets, making sure everyone has a missing flyer, uh, talking to everyone about this case. But here at the Noonan Times Herald, we also hear that they held a prayer vigil. Family and friends of Fowler have been working to raise awareness of her disappearance, and a prayer vigil was held Sunday. Social media posts are made with the hashtag Bring Olivia Home. We have no new leads at this time, but we continue to search daily and pass out flyers, McCoy said. Law enforcement is doing what they can, but honestly, they are so understaffed, she said. We will do whatever it takes to find her. Something you certainly don't want to hear from a family that's going through this, that they're even having concerns about law enforcement not having enough resources to help them, but uh, very clear from Tamara, that's, that's indeed what they're facing here. Not being exactly sure how long she was outdoors, uh, knowing she potentially left as early as 2 a.m. and isn't sighted until 1030 by the DNR ranger. Uh, I just wanted to take a look at the weather, especially with some of the cases we've talked about here for the past few months. Uh, is there any potential concerns around this? We see for Manchester, uh, Georgia, Friday, August 13th. Even on the overnights from midnight until 6 a.m., the lowest on the lows is 68 degrees. So uh, thankfully, I don't think we're in any type of severe weather conditions uh, where we have too much concern. And we know that she's seen at 1030 in the morning. By then, uh, there's still lows of 68, but the highs are 86. Uh, we've got a pretty decent range there. Highs for that day, 91. So doesn't look like weather would be a factor in this case in particular. Uh, let's get over to Fox 5 with an interview that includes Olivia's sister, Roxanne, and a very interesting comment that Roxanne makes. There's no way, there's no way that this case cannot be solved in this small town. There's no way. Unless there is someone else involved that has got everybody's mouth shut. I don't know about you guys, but I sensed a lot of frustration and pain from Roxanne in that clip. Uh, we're going to share another one with you in just a, a few minutes, but I'm kind of stuck on that question of who could she be referring to or what could possibly be going on where she thinks that essentially people might be being silenced around this. Um, it's weird because we have Tamara talking about, you know, law enforcement is severely understaffed with this and that brings its own challenges. But now we have Roxanne making statements where maybe there's something at work actually against the truth of their case coming out. Um, a lot of really, really big concerns around this. But the family is doing everything they can. Let's go ahead and take a look at a Facebook page that has been put together for Olivia's army. And if you want to be part of that, there's a link in the description box down below. Please go down there and click on it. Olivia Fowler is missing. Um, and the latest post just from a day ago, they're doing a bake. Honestly, if you go through this, you're going to see they're doing all kinds of fundraisers. Uh, from what I understand, I think there is a $5,000 reward currently available, but they're trying to A, increase the reward, B, get some more resources on this, possibly if they have to hire a private investigator, something like that. So there's a lot of different fundraising efforts that are going on. T-shirts with Olivia's army. You can see the beautiful logo here. Uh, and you can see her aunt wearing the shirt here. Uh, other people that care about this case as well. But um, just in case you happen to be in the area, 
Uh, I know this video is coming out just in time for this, October 30th, 2021, at the Piggly Wiggly in Manchester, Georgia. Uh, Georgia. Olivia's Army will be selling tickets for a basket giveaway. They're going to draw the winning ticket Saturday morning live uh, before the bake sale. So there's a bake sale on top of that. Uh, of course, like I said, you can help support their efforts by following the Olivia's Army page here. And we need more efforts than that. I need you to just take a moment and think, do I have any friends? Do I have any family, acquaintances, maybe people I work with, anyone in Georgia, uh, this area in particular, I know it's it's kind of small, so we might need to widen that out a little bit. If you got friends in Atlanta, who knows? We we don't know who might have a piece of this puzzle. Uh, we want to share this video with them, so please just take a moment, think about that. And if you do have someone like that in your life, please uh, let's help raise awareness to Olivia's disappearance and maybe get that crucial tip called in for her family uh, to find her. Uh, they are also running a GoFundMe. We do have some more information here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that together. My name is Tamara McCoy. I'm creating this GoFundMe in order to raise money for a reward for Olivia Fowler. We haven't had very much luck with leads to locate our Olivia. Olivia suffers from severe anxiety and depression, and we're afraid she may be in danger. We're from a small county in the middle of nowhere. Last seen wearing a tie-dye shirt, white cut-off shorts, and black flip-flops. The shirt had both pink and blue on it. Olivia weighs about 100 pounds. She has hazel green eyes. One tattoo on her right forearm says, I love you. And recently, Olivia lost her right fang tooth. We're desperate to locate her. Some people think she ran away, but I believe in my heart that isn't the case. Uh, as a matter of fact... I can't remember which article. I was looking in one of the articles and they stated that uh, police might have told the family they thought that she was just a runaway. And the family is like, how could she be a runaway? We're talking about a 26-year-old. So she's a missing person. You know, uh, she, she's not a teenager and her mom doesn't know where she is. This is clearly a missing person's case. Olivia's grandmother has passed away her youngest child's first birthday, all the things that she's missed since her disappearance. And she's only been missing, uh, well, only, I'm sure it's felt like an eternity for her family, but we're now looking at this about two months and two weeks into it. Recently, on top of those things, her mother and stepdad also lost their home and everything in it due to a fire. We as a family ask for your help in bringing Olivia home safe. Olivia isn't the type to just leave with someone she doesn't know. Uh, that's another thing that the family friend was really pushing with me. She's like, look, Olivia's a homebody. Like, this doesn't make sense for her to just kind of run off or for her to disappear. Like, the whole runaway concept just doesn't seem to really fit in this case. Uh, and Tamara continues here. She isn't the type to just come up to you and start talking. And if she sees you, she may run because she may more than likely be scared. We believe she may be somewhere being held against her will. And this next statement, um, I think there's a misspell in this. And let me apologize to the family if I get this incorrect. But if this is a factor, I think it's a factor that people looking to help with this case need to be aware of. She may even be in a, I believe it's drug induced state was supposed to be the statement here. Um, I don't have any information in terms of drug use. I have no idea. I'm curious about it in particular when you're hearing about, I mean, don't get me wrong, people lose teeth all the time, but uh, it's just one of those things that when there's severe drug use, you hear about that as a potential side effect as well. I don't know if this has any component to this, but I just wanna put it out there as a consideration, as a factor, because if there is, some type of history of drug use or something like that, there might be other social circles that need to be engaged for that information to come forward. Once again, I'm not seeing it anywhere in any of the official articles that have come out on this case. And the word here is SUG. I believe that it's a typo. I believe that they're saying there might be a possibility that she might be in a drug-induced state. So I just wanna put that out there as a possible consideration. If nothing turns up on our Olivia's safe return, then all money donated will go to her children or 
to Olivia to get well. So once again, I'm just kind of seeing a few indicators around this. Um, but this is a case that needs help. This is a case that needs help on the awareness front. Uh, and we don't need to be looking for reasons to discount it. You know, uh, if, if there is some kind of drug component, it doesn't matter. This is a mother of three. This is a family in pain. Everyone involved in this deserves answers. They deserve to know where Olivia is and to be able to bring her home in one manner or another. They deserve to be able to bring her home. Right now, the GoFundMe is at $840 raised. They're trying to get to $5,000 on behalf of myself and my amazing supporters. Thank you guys so much through PayPal, Patreon, merchandise. We are going to make a donation to this GoFundMe just as soon as I'm done recording today. Help move that needle up. And I hope that you'll consider joining us in that donation. I'll have a link in the description box down below so you can make a donation as well. Just in case you can't make it to the bake sale this weekend, think about a little potential trick-or-treat gift for this case and maybe stop by here at GoFundMe. In the links down below, everything that we've looked at uh, here today, as well as other articles I didn't quite include because there wasn't information that differed too much, but also down there, a web sleuths thread, um, a few pages of conversation, other considerations around this case, or you can join in the conversation yourself if you'd like to at web sleuths or in the comment box down below. As always, I ask, please remain respectful to the conditions around this case. Realize there's children, one of them, probably old enough to come looking for videos about their mom, wondering what people are saying and what people are thinking. So please, um, please keep that in mind when you're, you're coming and, and speaking about this case. Just to round out a few other holes that I, I can with this story based on the information I got from the, from the family friend, her cell phone was left at the home that she was living at. So we've got nothing that we can do in terms of tracing cell phone. You heard it from her aunt. She didn't have her ID. She didn't have her social security, any of those things. I believe her purse also left at home. So really no way to take care of herself. I mean, if we are trying to consider this and I'm saying run away in, in quotes, maybe that, you know, leave your life behind, go restart your life type scenario. Um, she didn't take anything to really be able to do that. So certainly raises uh, a lot of cause for concern with this. Now, one thing I did ask a family friend about is that path of travel. Did that make sense in terms of where she could be headed? Um, because she's going 4.4 miles. She's, she seems to be, and it's not, I mean, yes, there's this big hoop that she could do if she wants to do like an eight mile round trip to get back to the place that she's living at. It seemed like she might've been trying to go somewhere. The family friend said possibly that there was a close friend of hers that might live in that area. And the family friend was not very confident about knowing the specifics of it. I just want to put it out there as a possibility and for other family that might be watching this as a potential potential thing to think about with this case. Just taking a look at that path of travel. Where was she trying to head to? Um and who knows, maybe in that there is a thought of picking up the trail and finding out, oh, yeah, there is someone else that saw her or, yeah, she was trying to get to her friend's house. And we know that that is only a half a mile from where she was seen by the DNR ranger. So maybe that'll help narrow the search area in some way uh, in terms of the boyfriend, because look, with, with cases like this, and I think the whole country is especially aware of this. Uh, with Gabby's case and and all the considerations that have gone on with that. Um, a lot of thought, I think, with a case that has these elements is going to be going towards the boyfriend. Uh, the only information I could really get about this man is he did contribute uh, a few hundred dollars to the reward fund. I uh, asked if he helped with any boots on the ground search efforts. Um, the family friend did not believe that he did. And I asked if there was anything that they noticed that might have been strange. This might really not be strange, but I just want to put it out there. Reportedly, he wound up leaving town the Sunday after she disappeared, but he's known to leave town. He has a job in a different part of the state that he travels to, and then he stays in that area while he's working that job. So potential sign, maybe, but that could have just been, it could have just been normal 
Um, I know a lot of us would think, well, wait, no, if my significant other was missing, I wouldn't go to work. I'd be working those search efforts or at a minimum, you know, staying around town, talking to people, handing out flyers. But, uh, you know, people process things differently. We always have to remember that uh, when it comes to talking about the cases on this channel. So that is it for the additional information I was able to get. Once again, we need your guys' help. Please share this video with anyone that you think might be helpful. And I would really appreciate that. Um, I wish that we could get more help to help find her or help figure out what happened because Olivia would not just vanish. Olivia did not just vanish. Before we end today's video, I just want to thank some people that helped us make that donation, that help us make donations regularly, monthly to many wonderful organizations that help with missing persons cases, just like the one that we were talking today. New patron, Simone Gordon, thank you for joining on Patreon, but we've got several patron patrons that also increased their pledges. A big thank you to Anna Levinovskaya. Thank you to Barbara T. Thank you to Ann Woodworth. All of them increased their pledges to help us do these great things on the channel. If you'd like to do the same, please visit lordnarts.com where you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or just buy us a coffee like Dr. Gunsmith, longtime brain scratcher, recently did. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, we really need your help. You can tell we don't jam these things with commercials. You might see one at the beginning. You might see one at the end. We do that because we want you to be able to focus on the case. We want to help this case the best way that we can. In order to do that, we do need some support from you guys. So everyone that's part of Team Lord Narts, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for helping us do this on this channel and doing, we've been doing this for six years at this point, but we can't without you. So a big thank you from me. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. I hope you have a safe and happy Halloween that you get to appreciate that day and enjoy it. Maybe a bit more than we did last year. I know I will be. I hope you guys do the same. Take care and I'll see you back here on Monday with a brand new episode of Case Cracked on the Lord and Arts channel.